open your eyes. Here it is. And I think that sometimes in the church, we are, we are the best at ignoring the obvious. And that is the time is short. And everybody here needs to find their place on the wall. Everybody here needs to find their place that we're serving and that we're a part of the harvest and what God is doing. And, and not put it off to better conditions, more convenient. I'll be honest with you, most of what God has done in our life hasn't been convenient. I told my, uh, one of my children that we're going to be going back to the Philippines. And the last time I was at the Philippines, I had a heart attack. And, of course, it kind of rattled the whole family, both church and at home. And, like, well, how's mom feel about that? Oh, she's going with me. And, well, do you think that's wise? I wanted to say I gave up trying to be wise when it's God's job to be wise. I just want to do what God's telling me to do. And, well, what if you have a heart attack? Well, one thing I know, I can make it through one. I had one when I was over there. I got home, didn't I? And, of course, in their thinking, they're thinking, you know, that, you know why are you going back? It wasn't so hot the last time. Well, it was actually pretty good the last time. We had fantastic ministry. And I think that sometimes we think that there are things that God wants us to do that, no, you know, God wouldn't want me to do that because this happened, that happened, and we just excuse it away. There may be some that think, you know, I wouldn't go on a missions trip, take vacation time to go work on a missions trip. Nah, that wouldn't be any fun. And then people come back, and they're all fired up, and God's really doing awesome things in their life. Well, you know, maybe I should have, Thought about doing that. Don't write things off because you don't have the money. God can give you the money. Don't write things off because you don't have time because God can give you the time. Don't write things off because you're not prepared. Get prepared. Anybody here ever heard of a not really that well-known football player, Tom Brady? And Tom Brady was playing for the Patriots, and his predecessor broke his thumb. So they didn't have anybody else. They stuck Tom Brady in there. Oh, man. Did fantastic. Now, I want you to understand something. Tom Brady didn't decide when his predecessor broke his thumb, I think I'll get prepared to be a quarterback. He was already prepared. Don't wait to see the opportunity to start preparing. It'll pass you. Look at someone tell him, quit getting ready, get ready. On your mark. Get set, go. No, on your mark, go. And we're waiting for the get set so we have a little bit more time before we go. And I think there's a lot of things God wants to do here and in your life that we need to have ears to hear and eyes to see. And that's what I'm speaking on this morning is 2020 Kingdom Vision. We're on part six. I'd encourage you to get the other ones. And last week I talked about developing a, a vision and how important it is to see from our heart through our head and not just through our head. And that if we've been brokenhearted, that can affect our capacity to see because we're trying to see through a fractured vision. And God wants to heal our broken heart. And the Bible calls our heart the spirit of our mind. And as believers, we have to develop the spirit of our mind. That doesn't happen automatically just because you came, became a Christian. All of a sudden, now you're thinking like a Christian would think. No, just like a baby. A baby doesn't think a certain way when it gets born. It has to learn how to think. And it has to learn the, the things that need to happen in life. The natural mind, the Bible says, is carnal and doesn't desire to perceive spiritual things and things like the kingdom. I also talked about how important it is to have a healthy heart and practice good heart health, spiritual heart health. Don't wait until Jesus comes back to think, well, you know, I think I'll make things right with him. Too late. Be prepared for his coming. Don't prepare when he comes. Too late. Today I want to talk to you about having our hearts right with God. We can have a broken heart, and God can heal us, and yet still we don't have our hearts right with God. We're glad that our broken heart got healed, but our, our heart really isn't putting God first in our life. And Romans chapter 8 and verses 5 through 8, it says, For those who live according to the flesh 
set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, notice capital S, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So, as long as we're thinking the same old fleshly way that we were thinking, we cannot please God. In order to please God, our thinking has to change. Got to get rid of that stinking thinking. My first point this morning is you can't have a kingdom vision with a carnal mind. You can't have a kingdom vision. You can't have a spiritual vision without a spiritual mind. You can't have a carnal mind. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And for too many people, that, that's what they're thinking. Well, what are we going to eat today? Or, you know, what am I going to wear today? Or what have we got to drink? Or what are we going to do? And, and realize the kingdom of God is so much more than that. And when the kingdom is first, all those things that you need, they come right, right along with it. When we live according to the flesh, we set our minds on the things of the flesh. And I think sometimes even coming to church, well, that's too hot, ah, it's too cold, music's too loud, not loud enough. And we're not really tuning in to what God is saying to us, and we're not mining the field and, 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 and harvesting what God has for us while we're here because we're in the wrong mindset. The word carnal come, comes from the word carnivore. Anybody know what a carnivore is? They're meat eaters. So carnal people are meatheads. We need to think about that when we're being carnal. I'm being a meathead today. We focus our perception and our thinking on what pleases the flesh, and that brings death. Because if you do what your flesh tells you to do all the time, you are not going to say that you're sorry. You are not going to bite your tongue. You are not going to keep your job when you did all those at that job. You're not going to really work out your marriage. It's all going to be about you and you being pleased, and if it feels good, do it. Until eventually everybody around you has been damaged by your selfishness and self-centeredness and carnality. The Bible says that carnal mind is an enemy to God. You ever stop to think that, man, the way I'm thinking, God sees me as an enemy. Wow, that's a powerful thing when you think about it. But when we live according to the Spirit, we set our perception and thinking on the things of the Spirit, which brings life and peace. Sometimes we're thinking about the carnal things because we haven't let God take care of us yet. We have to take care of ourselves. So we've got to make sure that we have food that we need to eat. We have to have clothes that we need. And so we're often about trying to do things first before finding out what God wants first. And when you put the kingdom first, the Bible says all these things will be added unto you. We don't automatically change when we get born again from a carnal to a spiritual mind. As believers, we have to develop the spirit of our mind. What is the spirit of our mind? The spirit of the mind is the mind of Christ that you get where your mind is conforming to your spirit instead of dominating your spirit. In cleansing streams, they call that alignment. That means you're getting your soul, your mind, will, and emotions under the authority of your spirit because your spirit is who you are. I am a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. And carnality cuts my body and soul off from my spirit. And so I'm not being led spiritually. I'm being led by the demands of my flesh. And that, that flesh can be self-destructive. So we don't change automatically. We do that by changing not just what we think, but I want to zero in this morning on our need to change not just what we think, but the way we think. Do you continue to see things the same way you did before you were reborn spiritually, before you had Jesus come into your life, or do you see things a different way in light of your new birth in Christ? It's the way you see things that has to change. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 and 17, Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
In other words, hey, there's a new way with, that came with the new day. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And when you follow Jesus, the way changes. Oh, there are many ways to God. No, read your Bible. Jesus said, I am the way. There's no other way. That'd be like saying there's many ways out the driveway. No, there's only one way. One way out this driveway, one way in the driveway. Well, there's many ways, yeah? Good luck. It, that means that we're not the same when we become new creatures in Christ. We're new creatures. Old things pass away, and all things become new. All things are seen. All things are viewed in a new way. The old carnal way of, pass, of thinking passes away, while the spiritual way of thinking becomes the new way that we think. Why is that so important? Because what we think about, we bring about. Do you want more of your sinful life in the past, or do you want more of the new life that Jesus brought into the present, and do you want to carry it into the future? Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. That's why if we don't change the way we think, we don't change the way we are. We just stay the way we were. Anyone besides me, I don't want to be the way I was. I had enough of that. I had my own way enough to not want it anymore. In the kingdom of God, the way we think changes because the way we live changes. Would you think the same way about your life if you inherited a billion dollars or won hundreds of millions of dollars in the lottery? You think you'd be worrying about paying your cable bill? You think you'd be worrying about how many miles are on your car and whether or not you're going to be able to get another car? Do you think that you would be thinking about maybe helping people that you love in ways that you weren't thinking about before that? I don't know about you, but man, I... I'd get my son-in-law and my son over to the house, and we'd set up about five or six computers, and I'd have one of them looking at cars. I'd have another one looking at college education for my grandkids. I'd have another one looking at a summer place. I'd have another one looking at, and I mean, we'd be having a blast because when your resources change, things change. You think in a different way. When Jesus Christ comes into our life, it should be far more impacting than winning the lottery because that's only money. Jesus came to change our whole life, not just our finances. The added resources change the way we think because there are so many ways that we can go that we couldn't go before because we did not have the resources to do that. And so if we have more resources, then we have to think, okay, what can I do? How can I make a difference? Hmm. When Jesus healed the sick, it changed the way his disciples thought about the sick. It changed the way that sick people that got healed thought about sickness. So when they come along and somebody was sick, hey, Jesus of Nazareth, he heals the sick. And he's going to have a meeting over here. Man, you need to go see him. You'll get healed. Maybe before when you'd pastor me, you'd say, that poor thing, I feel so bad for him. Maybe you do something for him to, you know, give him some money or food or whatever, cover him with a blanket. Before, they thought, poor fellow. Now they're thinking, hey, Jesus, he can heal you. If you can't get to him, just tear the roof off the place. Drop someone down in there. They'll get healed. Peter, he walked by the gate beautiful all the time, and there's a lame guy there begging for alms. He walks by this one day, and he asked him for alms, and he says, Silver and gold have I not, none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And this guy jumps up and starts walking, been lame since birth. See, Peter thought in a different way. Different way means a different day. When Jesus cast out demons and they saw someone that was demon-possessed, they said, Hey, Jesus casts out demons. You don't have to put up with that demon anymore. If you bring them to Jesus... Jesus will cast them out, and then Jesus sent them out, and they were casting out demons. It changed their way of thinking and their way of life, but the way of life follows the way of thinking. If your thinking doesn't change, life doesn't change. You see, when you read the Bible, it doesn't just change what you think. It changes the way you think. You begin to think that all things are actually possible for those who believe. 
You read, read it in the Bible, you think about it, you're thinking about your impossibilities, you're thinking about some of the things that you're going through that you're not happy with the way that life is, is, is unfolding for you, and you think, well, you know, maybe I can believe God. It changes the way you think. My second point is, is that kingdom vision changes the way you think about the most important thing, yourself. Do you think about yourself differently since you've become a Christian? If you continue to see yourself the same as you were, you'll continue to behave the same way that you behaved. You'll continue to have the same worries, the same fears that you had. You'll continue to live in the same level that you lived before instead of being able to be lifted to a higher level by changing the way you think. When you see yourself as being a reborn Christian, newly created in your heart, your vision of yourself and all that you can be changes. Think about that. The possibilities emerge, and your head chimes in real quick. Hey, wait a minute. You know, you don't believe that, do you? Well, yeah, I do. Shut up and move over. I have the mind of Christ. You've got company now. So you're going to be silenced, and he's going to speak up. Old things are passing away. All things are becoming new. The new things are going to be thought about now. The old things are going to be passing away. The old things died. We're doing a lot of water baptism today. And what that represents is the old life died it's buried and the new life comes out of the watery grave and it's time for us to quit thinking the thoughts of the old life and start thinking the thoughts of the new life and the possibilities that because god is with you because you are a new creature in christ because you can do all things through christ who strengthens you what else can you not do that you couldn't do before you need to investigate the new you you used to see yourself as a sinner but now you see yourself as a saint Oh, no, Pastor, I'm not a saint. Read your Bible. I'm not talking about what you were. I'm talking about what you are in Christ, what you could be if you'll just grab a hold of that thing and see it until you be it. You were lost, and now you're found. You were guilty, and now you're forgiven. Quit thinking about all the lost days and think about the new days. Think about the new possibilities. Quit thinking about the things that you did wrong. You've been forgiven doesn't matter how bad it is. It's forgiven. It's forgiven. You were a victim, but now you're a victor. Are you thinking like a victim or are you thinking like a victor? You were born in a poor family and now you're reborn into a royal family. It bugs me when people carry their poverty mentality into their Christianity because the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible says, Beloved, I would above all that you would be in health and prosper even as your soul prospers. But until your soul prospers, you're not going to. Because you're thinking, you're stinking thinking, your back past history thinking is wanting to dominate the present. And as long as you let it, you'll keep getting more of the same. The Bible says in Revelations 1 6 that he has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I mean, I'm, I can remember when, when I was learning about this, and there was a little song that went, Kings and priests and the righteous people, he has made us unto him. I, I like to sing songs like that because it kind of gets the word of God down on my spirit, you know. And the devil would tell me, remember you did this, remember you did that. Um, and how about this and how about kings and priests and the righteous people, he has made it unto me. Yeah. I'll even change the words every now and then just to keep it new. You were once in darkness, but now you're in the light. Your th thoughts were in darkness, but now you think in a different way. You think in the light. You have a night light even at night in your thinking. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who had called you out of darkness and into your marvelous light. Man, you don't have to sing those crying in the beer songs anymore. I don't sing those songs anymore. Like born to lose and of the life before. We need to sing a new song. A new song sung from the new us. That's what God's called us to. You th thought about yourself in condemning ways, and now you think about yourself in different ways as being no longer under condemnation. You'll never think differently about others until you think differently about yourself. If you condemn yourself, we're next, so do us all a favor. 
Quit condemning yourself. Jesus was condemned so you wouldn't have to be, so put it off and put on the, let the old pass and the new come. Romans 8, 1 through 2, there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh. If you're in condemnation, you're in the flesh. There's no reason to be condemned when Jesus paid for your sins. But according to the Spirit, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. My friend, it's time to quit feeling condemned about the things you've been forgiven for. It's time to quit feeling condemned because you hadn't asked God to forgive you because you don't think he's going to forgive you because you said you weren't going to do it and you did it again. Well, I want you to understand something. You did it again. You can ask God for forgiveness again and he will forgive you again because that's who he is. 2020 kingdom vision sees things differently because the king and his kingdom make the difference. The very first vision adjustment that we need to make with looking into life is that we need to look into different mirrors. We need to look into the mirror of what God, what his word says about me. And then we need to look into the mirror of our heart until they're the same. And let God be true and every man a liar. You see, sin can be devastating and it can have an, an, an impact on how we see ourselves. And sin, it can fracture the good we see in ourselves. And it also starts a real self-destruct cycle because when you see yourself as needing to be punished, you prophetically draw punishment to you. But when you see yourself as being forgiven, then you bring the benefits of forgiveness into your life. You're no longer thinking about things and tormenting yourself over things that happened in your past that need to die in a watery grave. We also fear that God and others will find out and condemn us. Well, God already knew, and he didn't condemn you. If other people condemn you, then they're carrying around their own condemnation. They're just sharing with you what they have. You don't have to take it. Perhaps we even resort to punishing ourselves, thinking that we'll show God that we really are wanting to right things that we have done wrong, and God is saying, you can't. Because then you're going to expect other people to right things they've done wrong. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I cannot pay for anything I've done wrong. I am not a worthy sacrifice. Only Jesus Christ is. And there's some of us here, man, we've, we've done some things that we really still carry around with us. And, and today, while we're having water baptism, we need to remember that those things died with Christ. We need to put them away. Make up our mind. I'm not going there anymore. Put crime scene around that tape around that crime scene, and don't go back there. Look at someone tell them, stay out of there. King David, he damaged his own self-image with his own sins. He, he should have been on the front lines fighting and leading the battle, but instead he went, came back and he was on the top of the roof of his place, which was higher than all the other places, which means he could look down and see all the hot-looking women that were taking a bath because the water was caught in, up on the roof and they would take their baths up there. And when he should have been doing what God called him to do, instead he fell prey to what he was thinking about. And then he sees this good-looking woman, and well, you know, the rest is history. He worked things out so he could have an affair with her. She was married. Her husband was on the battlefield fighting. Then she becomes pregnant. I'm like, what are we going to do? You know, he wasn't around to get her pregnant because he was out on the battlefield. And Well, I'll, I'll make sure that he gets on the front lines and, and gets killed, and then I can marry this gal and raise the kid. So he got it all figured out and works just exactly like he said. The only thing is he, he forgot about God. Don't forget about God. He sends the prophet to him and he confronts him and he repents and David comes to God and I love this Psalm, Psalm 51. When David comes to the Lord, he knows, I've broken my heart so bad that only you can heal it. And he says, create in me a clean heart, O God. I bet he probably sang it because it's a song. He probably did something like, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. That's what psalms are. 
Psalms are powerful because they harmonize with your new man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? King David realized his sin had damaged not only God's heart, but his own heart. Sometimes you just get to the point where you can't get beyond a devastating thing that you've committed. Sometimes you can't get beyond. It's like it just seems so bad what you did. And that's when we need to come to God. And the, the Apostle John says, if our heart condemns us, God is bigger than our, than our heart. That God can create a new heart in us. But as long as we just sit there and not do anything about it, thinking that God is judges, thinking that God won't forgive us, thinking that it was just too bad, then we're going to hide that iniquity in our heart. And the Bible says, the Lord will not hear me. This is the same King David that said that. And I want you to know something, my friend. God will hear you. 1 John 1, 8 and 9 says that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all except for the real biggies. Why do we think that way? He will forgive us from all unrighteousness. All. All of it. I killed somebody. All of it. I raped somebody. All of it. I was raped. All of it. Not your fault, but if you hold judgment, all it'll do is make you bitter. Things that we have had happen to us, only God can heal. Have you ever been with someone, you see them so broken, and you said, I can't say anything to them that's going to make it any better. No, but God can. And sometimes all that's all you can do is say, you know, I can't do anything, but, but God can. I'd like us to just bow our heads if we would this morning. And I want to ask you something. Have you been, have you been stuck in carnality? Have you been thinking of yourself in terms of your past or in terms of your sin and Maybe God's speaking to you and saying, it's time for you to develop your spiritual mind. It's time for you to, to, to get out of the situation that you've been in. And it's time for you to ask me to heal your heart and to make you whole and to create a new heart within you. And you'd be honest and say, Pastor, pray for me. I need God to do that. If that's you, would you just slip up again, Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. If you raise your hand, I'd like you to stand to your feet and... I'm going to ask Jody to put this song on that I arranged here called Change My Heart, O oh God. And if you'll just come down to the front, I want to pray with you. And the reason why I want to play this song is because sometimes we've tried and failed to change our heart, thinking that somehow we'd be able to, and we can't. That's like somebody that needs heart surgery think they're going to be able to do it themselves. No, it doesn't work that. I don't care if you're a cardiologist or a heart surgeon. They can't heal their own heart. But God, he made the heart. God can heal more than the devil can break. Just close your eyes and lift your hands up to the Lord. Just let this be your cry.